Are you fr from Missoula? Not originally. Not originally, but have you heard of Edgar S. Paxson? No, but I know the last name. We need to remember him. He was a nationally known painter, still is, uh, but never acquired necessarily the recognition as Frederick Remington, a contemporary artist, and Charlie Russell. Nonetheless, Edgar S. Paxson was well acquainted with Charlie Russell. It's kind of funny. They both left home in the East when they were young. Charlie Russell left St. Louis to come to the Montana Territory. And Edgar S. Paxson, born in, near Buffalo, New York in 1852, decided to come West when he was 20 years old. His father had a successful carriage painting business in New York. And Edgar S. Paxson, as a young man, learned the skills of some of the skills of painting with paintbrushes. He carried brushes and pencils and sketchbooks when he came with him when he arrived in Montana Territory as a young man. He sketched when he could, but in the meantime he was busy working for ranchers in southwest Montana as a hunter and as a courier delivering mail and newspapers. Only five foot four and 140 pounds, he could travel swiftly. He went back east in 1874 to marry Laura, an old sweetheart. In 1876, when they were in Montana, he had heard of the Custer Battle at the little Battle of the Little Bighorn. And he became very much interested in that battle and decided if he was to become a painter, which he wanted to become, a realist painter of the West, Painting the Custer Battle could be a great idea. If it was done well, it could bring him recognition as a painter. So for 20 years, he researched the battle, visiting the battlefield three times, interviewing dozens of troops, Indians, and visiting the battlefield itself with Major Reno in 1878. In Montana, he was lucky that John McGuire left San Francisco and came to Montana. After a career acting in San Francisco, he came to Butte to open an opera house. Little entertainment in those days, and opera houses were very popular. He built, I think, two opera houses in Butte, one in Phillipsburg, which is still in operation today, one in Deer Lodge, Anaconda, and he needed someone to paint backdrops for his theater. And Edgar spent a lot of the years there painting backdrops for theater and signs. But all the while, thinking about this Custer battlefield painting, trying to improve his talents as a painter. And finally his talents caught up with his dream and it came to fruition after six years of painting in 1899. He finished it. It was six feet tall and nine feet wide and he sent it on a tour to cities back east. New York City, Washington DC, Chicago. People paid 25 cents to see the painting. That's about six dollars in today's money. And again, this is before th movie theaters. This was entertainment to pay and go in and gaze at this painting. Libby Custer, the widow of George, came and saw this painting in Washington, D.C. several times, at times bringing her to tears. The painting was a success as far as the tour and bringing recognition to Edgar S. Paxson. About that time, Edgar S. Paxson decided to move his family from Butte to Missoula. Their pollution in Butte at that time was pretty bad, heap roasting the ore outside on the ground and piles of logs and ore. The poisonous air, they fled to Missoula in 1906 and bought a house on Stevens Avenue. 611 Stevens, the home is still there today. This painting resided in the home, having public viewings once at the Florence Hotel and once at the Presbyterian Church in Missoula. The painting then ended up at the University of Montana in the science building, 
until 1954, dimly lit there. Eventually it was sold to the Buffalo Bell Cody Museum in Cody, Wyoming, where it is today. In 1911, the state of Montana commissioned Edgar S. Paxson to paint murals in our state capitol. And six of them are still can be seen today outside the House of Representatives. In 1913, Missoula County commissioned him to paint eight murals in our county courthouse. And they're a treasure we have today in Missoula. The city, or the county, commissioned Edgar to, pack, to paint those paintings for only $1,500, those eight murals. And that is an example of, all, of how all through his life, Paxson undervalued his work. His, his, uh, his commission should have been twice that for our Missoula County murals. But he happily agreed He continued painting till the end of his life here in Missoula. During World War I, it kind of slowed down the business of selling paintings. His son, Robert, went and fought in World War I on the front lines in France and was able to come back to Missoula, Robert Paxson. And years later, one of Paxson's paintings became quite popular, or let's say recognized, when Stephen Ambrose, the author of Undaunted Courage, his best-selling book about Lewis and Clark, when they chose Paxson's mural from our House of Representatives in Helena, the painting called Lewis and Clark at Three Forks with Chicago Wea, her husband, Charbonneau, the captains in York, etc. This has now, I'm sure, been seen by a lot of people, this Paxson painting. And maybe now this is his most famous painting. <laughs> but he is here with his wife, Laura, buried. And thank you for coming out today.